If you have been asking if healing is real, stick around and find out that healing is for real. And we don't mean maybe. My name is Tony. And I am Zane. And we are two witnesses and representatives of the miraculous gospel of healing. Bam! And boom! Like the music start back again now. Eh? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. This month, the month of February, we have done this four-part series. Today is the fourth part about death. And um, I will death. tell you all this. Share this. To me, this one series of teachings will replace oodles and oodles and oodles of hours of teaching. Indeed. And this will fill in so many blanks for you, and you'll have your healing. Bam. Indeed. Indeed. So share... Listen to each part more than once. And really cement this in your heart. And be healed. And be healed. Walk in life. Wisdom of life. (laughs) And as you referred to. Scripturally speaking. What we take to be commands is actually wisdom. Mhm. Mhm. And refreshing because pretty much this episode is going to be bringing out our main points of the previous 3. Right. And so with that, Zane, would you start please? Why sure sir. <laughs> Who are you calling sir? Page 38, and I'm locking the mystery of divine healing. Do not call me sir. I seem like I missed that bitch way. All right. I'll go back and check you. <laughs> All right. So I, I'm really, I, I also want to just chime in on what we just said there and, and really um, encourage also those who are looking at this. To really follow up on what Holy Brother Tony just mentioned there. Because if it is one thing in particular, to understand scripture and to realize that the scripture has actually told you what you needed to remove from you to walk in life is priceless. It's always there, just you're reading it through the pursuit of validation. Everything is validation, everything is validation. So you think is to, to appease God in the sky. When really and truly is telling you what you are purged from so that you could let that go. One of the things in particular, before we give the recap here of those three episodes that I want to actually say here, is that if you really consider the presence of sacrifices and offerings in the scriptures and how Jesus actually fulfilled that just to take those things out of you, I think that I could safely say that it is a priceless thought to know that God didn't leave that in your hand, but actually made that a transaction so that you could just let it go away. Just just let it go. <laughs> Amen. Yeah? <laughs> it's not something that you have to work out your system. It's not something that you need to go counseling for to know how. Just let it go. Just let it go. And look at the opposite and fill your awareness and your consciousness with what the opposite is. The that problem with counseling, problem with counseling is it is a stronghold for what you already think is a weakness. That is true, because they repeat and they recycle the same thing that you're trying to get out of. And here's the best example: there is Alcoholics Anonymous. Hmm. <laughs> you are continually 
reinforcing the fact that you're an alcoholic. Hi, I'm Tony. I'm a freaking alcoholic. <laughs> and I'm not oh, making yeah. light of it. Look, uh. for ones that don't have this wisdom, this knowledge, AA can help people. Yeah. All right. I'm not saying they can't. God is in everything, as my dear brother Zane reminded me. Right. So I'm not saying do away with A or anything. But what I am saying is so much what we think, what we call God's wisdom is actually man's wisdom, which is actually death. It is actually death. And you know the funny thing about the, the scriptures in, in, in of itself, as we're speaking about that, the, there is no way I, if for those of you who never read the Bible, I would encourage you to go read the Bible. And for those who have read the Bible, you'll know what I'm saying here is accurate. There is no way in the Bible where you are taught that change of mind is the counseling approach. It is the decision to let go a source of wisdom and fill your consciousness with another. That's all. Let it go. And if that, that means sometimes to let it go, you just need to find out why it should let be let go. How is it adding to death to your life? And that validates you just letting it go and filling yourself with a different awareness. Like most people, bro, just as you mentioned there, whether it's alcoholic, al alcoholism, or so, some other addictions, or even people who actually, um, like common addictions that people talk about in church, even things like porn. If you just stop festering on the problem, identify why it should be let go, what is the opposite of that, and make a new life routine that occupies your time with new knowledge, that will fall off like a dry leaf. It's so simple. But that is not what we are taught. But that is actually the scriptural way. Man, you are simple. taught to put yourself down, to be ashamed of yourself, to, to try to validate yourself through works. Yeah. You are told to ponder the problem. Everything that he sacrifices is telling you that you're not supposed to acknowledge anymore. We do. <laughs> Everything you're doing over and over. And here's the pathetic part. The secular world in many areas have grabbed a hold of this. Hmm. They've yeah. grabbed a hold and they know this. There are many life coaches that are not believers in Christ that teach these biblical, these scriptural things that me and Zane are talking about. Yeah, that's true. They have grabbed a hold of them and they haven't even read the Bible in a lot of cases. They even know it. But yet, Christians will put down exactly what me and Zane are teaching that is scriptural, that is biblical, and call it New Age. Sad. And will ostracize what we're teaching, even though it is truly scriptural. It's truth. And it works. That's the more important thing. It works. That's why I burn up what you've been taught by Western Christianity. Start with a fresh foundation. A foundation as we're talking about. And then things will fall off of you left and right and right and left. Amen. And you, 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 we know, we're not trying to convince you. Just put it to, 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 to put it to practice, and, and we guarantee you, one thousand percent, you come up with a different story. You're going to come up with a different story. 
All right? So let's recap everything that we covered in the last three sessions. All right? So I actually did a nice little summary here so that we, we keep it straight, keep it on point. <laughs> right? So remember, we spoke about five sacrifices and offerings, and these sacrifices were meant to identify that these things, once the sacrifice is done because the animals were used to carry it for you, and therefore it cannot be in you anymore once the sacrifice is done. So we spoke about the burnt offering. All right. So just as a recap, that is the oldest offering that you see in the scriptures. It starts, you see that with Cain and Abel. Right? And that represents submission. Right, sorry, that, that, that represents submission to God's will. The Hebrew, the Hebrew word for burnt offering there is Ola, from that actually means ascension, it means that you're purged from foreign spirits and the will and thoughts of foreign spirits. You're purged from that. So, how do we apply that in the opposite, in the wisdom of life? Remain exclusive to the identification with Christ in you. And use the promises of God as your only will. That also means that you have a responsibility to stop listening to a hundred voices and stay with what the Spirit of Christ says. It will get simpler than that. All right? The second sin offering, which is an offering to atone for and put sin. It is an expression of sorrow for the error and a desire to be reconciled with God. Which means, if the offering is done, you have your conscience has been purged of sin and purged of being less than Elohim with Elohim. How do we apply that in wisdom? That you live with the, with, with the awareness that you are reconciled to the fullness of God and life and there is nothing that can change that. Your mind and imagination is now life-giving no more dead works which means no more things to try to prove yourself before god because the sacrifice took care of that and so you can now relax in firm approval that you are the fullness of god and you are the fullness of life in christ now you had right brother <laughs> Got it. Dying hard. <laughs> the third is peace offering. So a peace offering is an offering expressing thanks or gratitude to God for his bounties and his mercies. It's actually closely related to the word shalom. That means whole. That's your whole. That means that we, inter we intertwine that, we, inter we interconnected that with Isaiah 53 that identify the absence of grief and sorrow as peace as well. So grief there was uh, malady. It also refers to anxiety. Mm. That was carried. So that means that you have to cease and desist, become the opposite of that. Disease. Yep. Stop identifying the diseases there, illnesses. Grief also covers terminal illnesses. Yes. As well as loss of wealth. All of as that. As long as any type of pain. Or any type of pain, exactly. Except pain in the butts. <laughs> right? And when he says any type of pain, we're talking about both physical as well as emotional. Emotional. Right? So here's the big thing. Just, mm -hmm. just to concrete what we were talking about earlier. Most people think, and this is contrary to what the truth is. We, we talk about emotional grieving and all this stuff. What are, what are we actually doing? It's teaching you to, to stir it up. Yeah. To keep the grief going. Yeah. Because Christ has already taken it from you. Yes, sir. Then when you acknowledge that, guess what? The grief and sorrows. Boo-boo. Bye-bye-bye. 
Again, change in our You don't have to sit in therapy and counseling for years on end, paying out large amount of dollars in order to be emotionally healed. Yeah. It is all done. It was all completed and shown to be completed by the cross. Yeah. By the death, resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I, I think even in response, even to add to what he just said there, remember on Friday we spoke about zeal. Zeal and peace go hand in hand in the scriptures. That means instead of stirring the depression, the negative emotions, if you have identified that these things have been carried already, then what you do is that you stir what God says. The example I use the example of somebody threatening your right of freedom of speech. Yeah. In the same way you sit down there and you stir yourself. <laughs> yeah, right? take my freedom of speech away. <laughs> Right? Same way you stir yourself. The same way you stir yourself with the acknowledgement that Yeshua has taken these things. Therefore, you have to learn, you have to make a decision to let go the anxiety, to let go the sorrow. The sorrow is anguish, worrying. All of those things are actually keeping you from experiencing your healing. Let because me give you a real life example. I went. 13 years without going to a doctor. Right. I went to a doctor before, and this was when I had ALS and all that crap. Um, so I was with the VA back then. Then I didn't go to the VA after I was healed and all that. Okay, so when I went to the doctor, to the VA, this go around, my new primary care physician was uh, looking at my records and and was going through the list. Oh, so you suffer from severe PTSD. Well, we'll give, no, don't you give me no psycho drugs. I'm, I'm completely healed of that. You're right. I no longer have depression, severe depression. I no longer have all the trauma associated with PTSD. I no longer have any of that. Yeah. I'm a believer in Christ. And then he named other things. Nope, that don't apply to me, Doc. And that made me realize how much and how easily, how much without my personal effort that this stuff had fallen off of me. He's there repeating from things I haven't even thought about in 13 plus years. Wow. Wow. Like that so right talk there. about Jesus good. being our validation for us. He absolutely is. Real life example. And the scriptures literally tell you, let the weak say, I am strong. It didn't say, let the weak say, how weak we are. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm weak and I can't, I can't walk five feet and but the human wisdom says you're getting out. You're venting. Yeah. yeah. Stop venting. Start speaking the truth. Start speaking life, not death. Death is anything contrary to life. Yeah. Which hopefully we have shown you during this series about death. Yeah. It's it covers more than what you think it does. Death is anything that's opposite to the truth. And and I, I I hope that this actually this series will also bring to an awareness all of the things that you have been doing, and you actually put it under the category of being pious and godly. And you're being sad and 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 and, and depressed and sitting down there in 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 your worry in your worrisomeness before God and your anguish. Grieving before God, and I believe that is godly. No, that is the wisdom of religion death. and our idea of repenting 
teaches us to flagrate ourselves, to whip ourselves yeah. and into in submission. That does not work. And you're living in condemnation. And by the way, Paul made it very clear. He made a difference. He says, he explained in Second Corinthians that is a difference between condemnation and conviction. The two are not the two are not the same. No. Nope. Right? So when we say that you're putting down grief and sorrows, well, what what how do you apply that to life? You live in a posture of thanksgiving, gratitude. For yes. Unto God. For his bounties and his mercies, because Yeshua has carried this. So you fill yourself with the zeal as well, where you're more aware of the things that he has taken out of you. He's given you life. So you, you're living in thanksgiving and zeal for wholeness, with confident expectation and security that this is healed. And let me say this, because the religious will always say, you better thank God. God demands thanksgiving. No. No. Dead he works. gave us words of wisdom because thanksgiving is for us. That's dead works right there. If you're doing it because you believe God requires it of you, that's dead works. As, yes. as, as, as a matter of fact, let me just add this point here to the fact to... To the, to the whole idea of Thanksgiving. We have been treating Thanksgiving in the Western community as though that's something that you do because either God requires it or you want to show God appreciation in your crying. That's not how mm -hmm. Thanksgiving was treated in the scriptures. No. Th Thanksgiving, the reason why these sacrifices actually came into being physically is because we do not realize that the scripture does not give anything physical and spiritual separation. So even when you say, thank you, Father, you are offering spirit to God. It's something real that is transferring. It's something real that you're giving to God in all. It's and not to something make it that even is just more, in To make it even more new agey, <laughs> hey, you get accused of it, you might as well do it, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what thanksgiving does it sets every part of your being on the right frequency on the frequency to life on the higher frequencies mm -hmm. that is what it does so therefore you are increasing the magnetic shield around you Right. By Thanksgiving, because now you are omitting the positive frequencies. This, this, this That's thing, the fact. These are these are things that actually, um, because of Paul's understanding of the things that we spoke about in the series, he even tells you when you pray, pray with Thanksgiving. Yes. Because it's, and according to what Holy Brother Tony just said, it's establishing the thought of the of, of what you are actually thanking God for. So you're establishing yourself in that frequency. And the scriptural end, you actually, this is not something that is in your mind. It's not appreciation. The moment you speak every thought, it's something that is a multiplication. So there is this interchange of delight between you and God. And because the Bible says that priests walk in equity and peace before God. This is, that is a whole other topic right there. We know that these thanksgiving is not seen as nothing before God. It's something that he is responding to in delight. Not that he needs it. You do it because you are thanksgiving. You're giving thanks to God. So all of these, all of these things actually show. If you if you really actually consider them, it has a lot more weight than you may have been giving it, because oh, you're yes. so obs obsessed with 
the results and condemn, self-condemnation because of what you're not seeing when, when you want to see it, that you're taking the things that are actually very heavy and making it light, and the things that should be light, you're making it heavy. It, it, that makes sense? <laughs> the exact opposite of exactly. the way things should be. All right. This, the second to last is guilt offering. Now, guilt offering is an offering for, to, to atone for, for, for sins of stealing things or when you're not sure whether you have committed a sin or a breach of trust. And most of us, those are coming and saying, when it's not working, that's where you're functioning from, guilt. And I've seen anything because in your mind, there is some sort of breach of trust between you and God. And, and as Paul says, if your conscience condemns you, you are condemned. You are condemned. 100%. <laughs> so if this has been carried for you already, then you know you can now rest in the posture of eternal perfection and eternal and perfect trust be between you and God. That if you say as a priest of God, this is healed. That eternal and perfect trust is, re is being realized. So we need to cease and desist from the assumption, because this is what it is. It is a presumption of failure. Mm -hmm. And your presumption of failure is because you are living, you have been brainwashed to think that you're not perfect, that you do some, you're, you're probably not living right. And you're guilty yeah, for things that you're not sure. Yeah, all kind of talk, all kind of talk. List is a list, and you, we and we go to sessions that actually validate these things. They to just adds one more thing to the list for you to sit down and and go step into anguish and anxiety about. So you are you're gonna apply that now by resting in our posture of eternal perfection. Of perfect and secure trust between you and God. And, get this, there is no possible reason for that to not be so anymore because of Jesus' sacrifice. Yes. In that transaction. You have right? been purged from everything which is evil. Everything. And anything that is death is evil. Therefore, anything not of love is evil. Mm -hmm. You have been purged from all of that, and you have been imputed. In other words, life has been put into you. And this is where Paul says that you should now enter the Holy of Holies with boldness and live in a full assurance of faith. This is a decision that you have to make. This is not something that you need to sit down and... No, you need to sit down and just make a decision. This has been carried already. God made it that simple that you just take what we say here, make it in your reality, and sit down and write out like a new, a new routine for you at home based on these realities so that you're living in the reality on a daily basis. And you will see that life fills your body. Amen. All right. The last, wait, wait, we had one, one more, which is the which is the the offering of what do you call it like the oh, meal yeah. offering, right? And that is like that is actually it represents the devotion of man's work to God. So take everything you're doing in your life. You're cooking. You're cooking. You're cooking a meal for your husband. Do it unto God. You you you're going down the road to the market. Do it unto God. That's what Paul, that's what pretty much Paul says to do everything that everything that you 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 do and say, do it in the name. Do it unto God, so that we move away from being led away by foolishness, people's opinions, people's attitudes, doctor reports, do everything unto God. We say what I no. And no, 
God helps those who help themselves is nowhere in scriptures. Ooh, you just sing that ship, Billy. And quit <laughs> speaking that nonsense. 100%. 100%. I just had to add that. A stamp and seal our message right there. <laughs> <laughs> right, so. With that said, be blessed. Be healed. And be a blessing. Be Boom. is the state that a believer is in. Bam. Yeshua. Sure.